Okay, I'm going to get started here today. Um, today, what we are going to discuss is we're going to focus on the 3 through 27 and a half ton uh, market today and kind of the changes that are going on um, with the market itself. There's been a lot of changes that have happened in the last year uh, as far as updates and designs to our soft, to our, to our product. So that's really what we're going to go over and then I'm going to I'm going to, at the end, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the software, which we call our commercial and best software, which is really the focus, I think, on this whole presentation today. And that is, it's a software package that Carrier came out. It's powered by our HAP program, our hourly analysis program. And it is really a very nice tool used for the replacement market, comparing new versus old, new versus new, with the different options and features that we have. It's one of the one of the best software packages I think carriers come out with uh, in a long time. So we're going to discuss that in a little bit here. So just as a, um, for those who uh, do not know me, I'm Mike Smith. I'm the Vice President of Commercial Sales for TEC. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can either email the link. I think um, you can email me at mike.smid at tecmongo.com or you can always call me on my cell phone at 847- Six three zero seven eight six seven, or contact your sales representative at TEC. So, uh, what we're going to do for today is um, we're going to do a couple things here. First of all, we're going to go over some industry updates, um, just kind of show you what has happened in the industry over the past four years. <clears throat> we're going to go over regulatory updates, and then I'm going to briefly go through carrier product updates. I'm not a big fan of just doing complete just product pushes. Pushes. I like to do application pieces along with the products. Then we're going to look at the tools, and this is where I'm going to go into the commercial invest software, and we're going to look at the tools that we can give you to analyze the payback associated with using certain features and options on a carrier or Bryant rooftop unit. Now, one of the things I'm going to do, um, I've done a lot of these webinars in, in the past year. I, I, I want to, <clears throat> I'm going to put something on here, and that is, um, I'm going to have a que two questions at the end, and on the bottom. In your webinar piece, you can actually type the answer to questions. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give, an, give two questions at the end of the webinar, and the first person to get the two questions right, I will offer a prize to. Okay, or a uh, it's going to be a and I'll and I'll explain that as I get into this presentation. So the first person to do that. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do today. So let me get started here. Um, I want to kind of show you what's happened in the marketplace. Um, basically, 2008 uh, is when the uh, you know bubble was still uh, not quite bursted, and then we hit 2009, and I think everybody in the market pretty much felt it, and the whole market shrunk dramatically. Um, but the good news part of it is that ever since 2009, we have had substantial growth, or you know, flat to last year was about three flat to three percent up in 2012. But in 2013, they are, uh, the market uh, folks are anticipating about a 10% growth in the uh, 3 through 25 ton marketplace. Uh, so that's uh, pretty exciting. So um, if you look here at the product mix, in red is what we call our base tier unit, or for those in the market who are familiar with the carrier uh, nomenclature, it's the 48TC, 4850TC model. And then we have our performance tier market, which is in blue, which is the HC, 48HC, or LC products. And you can see basically in 2007 and 2008 and 2009, in 2007, 40% of the market was high efficiency. And, and then as the market started to collapse and everything went down to the almighty dollar again, basically the base tier went up again, you know, to 89%, where the high efficiency was only 11% in 2010. But the good news, what we're seeing now, is actually the performance tier market is slowly starting to increase, and I think we're going to start seeing a trend where we're starting to see more high efficiency options or high efficiency offerings that we're going to be offering in the marketplace. So, <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to go over the uh, regulatory trends um, uh, and the uh, some product updates on the constant volume equipment. So. If we look here at the next slide, we have ASHRAE 90.1 in the DOE. Um, there's been a lot of changes that have happened, right? And everybody remembers back in 2010, and it seems like it was just yesterday when that happened, where we 
where we hit minimum efficiency standards in 2010 up to 63 tons. And that, ha that happened in the marketplace. Um, what, some of the highlights, and I'm not going to mention them all, you know, manual art, outside air dampers are no longer allowed on units basically five tons and above. Um, and then just this year, what we found happening is we had to upgrade all our, uh, in the past 2012, we upgraded all our efficiency motors up to higher efficiency motors on the rooftop units. But really what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus down here on the uh, top two here, and that is the low leakage economizer damper. And where I'm going to spend a lot of time is the two-stage fan uh, requirement on single zone package units, 10 tons plus. Okay, that's a big part, and I'm gonna I'm gonna focus a lot of energy today talking about that. Okay, so if we look at a unit, and this is not part of the questions, just just a question I'm posing to you. I'm gonna have two questions at the end, and that is, what is the largest energy consumer in a package rooftop unit? And a lot of times, what everybody says, and when I do this in a live in a live uh, crowd, most of the folks say compressor. And really, what the answer is, it's the fl supply fan, because the supply fan is actually running all the time year round, right? So the largest energy consumer in a package rooftop unit is the supply fan motor. So, which leads us to this: the reason why we do two stage fan motor option. And basically, ASHRAE 90.1 that is stating that as of January 1st, 2012, and I think California was the first state to adopt it. Illinois has not adopted it, but we imagine it's going to be adopted soon. Okay, that any unit greater than 110,000 BTUs serving a single zone must require two-speed fan or variable speed drive on the indoor fan motor. Okay, so what we have to do at cooling demands less than or equal to 50%, the supply fan controls shall be able to reduce the airflow to no greater than the larger of the following. And really what you're going to find is the majority of folks are going to use the two-thirds of the full fan speed on a package rooftop unit. So we got to say a seven and a half ton rooftop unit, instead of operating at 3,000 CFM on first stage where we have one compressor running, we will only be operating at 2,000 CFM on the first stage. And because we know that the majority of time nobody oversizes equipment, we're going to find that probably you're going to be operating at that two-thirds fan speed almost year-round. So that's why there's so much significant uh, energy savings uh, it, when we talk about two-stage fan and why there's a lot of momentum on this. And this is an offering that I absolutely love, and I've been pushing in the marketplace uh, with the engineers for the past couple of years because at the end of the day, if we can reduce the brake horsepower in a package rooftop unit, you're going to save a lot of energy for the for the customer. Okay, so what is Carrier doing? Um, what we are doing is we are going to basically put a VFD on it. We are not going to use a two-stage fan motor. We're going to use a standard VFD. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it's compatible to a standard thermostat. So we're not going to have to have a high-end technician run out there and do a startup on it from carrier to make sure you have your rooftop is started up properly. It is going to be able to start up out of the box with a standard thermostat. Okay, It is going to require a more sophisticated, sophisticated economizer, which I'll go in a bit, over in a bit. But with a VFD, it's capable of failed configuration with a couple of additional benefits, right? We can do soft start. Let's say if we have a fabric duct system, we can look at part load CFM for dehumidification control. Um, so that's a really nice benefit of it. Okay, When is it available? It's available right now. And what products are it available on? It's available on products from 3 to 100 tons on a rooftop line right now. So, um, And I'll go through that line here in a bit. So again, here's our approach. We're going to have an ABB drive. So on first stage cooling, our fan speed is going to be reduced down to 67%. What we call this is we call it staged air volume, SAV. Okay, that's going to be the new acronym you're going to be hearing in the industry. It's no longer going to be CAV for constant air volume or VAV for variable air volume. You're going to hear a lot of staged air volume. This is an option you can buy standard on our rooftop units, 3 to 100 tons. You have significant energy savings with this. And I'm going to go through this with the software tool later on to show you the true benefit of doing single, air, single zone air volume. Okay. 
if you look here at just a tr traditional chart here, and this is a markets all throughout the U.S., and they show that if you look at it, a Miami, you basically will reduce your energy consumption by about 40% using versus using a single speed unit. In Los Angeles, 60%. Phoenix, less than, less than 40. New York, St. Louis, which is probably the closest to our weather, it's going to be about 45%. And you're going to see a significant energy savings when we look at the city of Chicago or in our surrounding cities, Milwaukee and South Bend and Rockford, where we can basically say, save significant energy savings by using this. And I'll show you our specific data here in a bit. So what I mentioned earlier is there's other things. That, so we have an ABB drive. So we're going to use ABB as our standard drive we're going to have on the unit. Again, it's going to have a new multi-speed fan relay board, which we can use a standard thermostat with. That is the carrier advantage, carrier and Bryant advantage, is using a standard thermostat in order to control this VFD. Okay. What we're going to do different now is we're going to have a new Honeywell W722 controller that's going to be controlling this package rooftop unit. It's going to require a Honeywell silk bus actuator, and it's going to require a couple of digital sensors. Now, that's a good thing. Even though it sounds a little more complicated, it's a good thing. So I want to talk a little bit about economizers now. So with... And this question is not one of the questions that I want you to answer at the end. This is just a question that I'm just posing during the presentation. With the two-speed fan option, how do we maintain a minimum of outside air if the space requires um, what uh, C, the, the minimum CFM the space requires? So let's say we have that thousand, that three thousand CFM rooftop unit that uh, the um, a forty-eight TC 08 Okay, so we got an 08, a 7.5 ton unit that delivers 3,000 CFM. And let's say we just set our economizer to handle 20% outside air. So 20% outside air is 600 CFM. If we do 600 CFM through there, and let's say now we vary the fan speed. So the fan now is reduced down to two-thirds. So now we're bringing 2,000 CFM of air. Our airflow has dropped, but our damper opening remains the same. So we're bringing now more outside air for, for run, when we're running at low fan speed. So now what we need is we need, and this is why this, we're using this Honeywell controller on here, is we need to modulate the outside air when we reduce the fan speed. And that is an option that you have to provide when you do two-stage fan operation. So what we do is we use the new Honeywell Jade controller, and what, what they will do is the dampers will modulate based on the minimum air. So now when I drop down to minimum air speed of 2,000 CFM on a 7.5 ton unit, my airflow still remains at 20% outside air. Okay? So that is, uh, that is a nice option, and it is required whenever we do two-stage fan. Okay. The other thing when we talk about economizers in this Jade controller is Honeywell did a study back in 2010, and what they found was that 64% of the economizers that were installed in the market were not operating properly. Okay? They weren't configured correctly. They weren't wired correctly. And what happens when you get your first service call is oftentimes they're either unplugged or disconnected so they don't cause another nuisance problem in the, in the, in the field. Okay, so now with this new Honeywell Jade controller, they are able to configure it properly, make sure the sensors are actually accurate and working. We're able to select minimum positions for proper ventilation um, and all the requirements that we typically want to see with an economizer. Because if we can operate in economizer mode on a rooftop unit, it is the most efficient operation of a package of a package rooftop unit when, when we're providing cooling and we don't have to run uh, compressors. Let's see here. Let me just, uh, I see a couple questions out here, so let me just uh, try to get to the uh, question line here. You know, I'm going to try to answer questions at the end here, My uh, and, I'll, and I'll do that at the end here. So, okay, the other thing I wanted to discuss was low leakage economizers. Um, Economizer design basically had to meet ASHRAE 90.1-2010, Section 6.4. Uh, 
which basically stated that we now have to provide low leakage economizer dampers on all our package rooftop units. So what we now is we have edge seals uh, on, um, uh, on the uh, economizer blades, but also the other change is we now, if you look at the bottom picture, the old carrier economizer, the gears were inside the damper chassis. And this is just showing a three to six ton unit. Now the new design basically has the gears outside of the chassis. So that is a, uh, that is a nice option now that they, uh, that they have here where we have it outside the chassis and now we're able to have reduced amount of leakage in the pack in the economizer. Let's go through product updates. Um, I'm going to kind of go through this fairly quick because um, I, I think it's key that you see some product updates, but I think the most important part we're going to talk about today is the software. Um, the carrier and the Brynett rooftop unit in the marketplace, in my opinion, is the best it's ever been. Um, we have about 85% plus of the market is replacement, and what we're finding is, you know, because TEC stocks units, we're, we're basically having a very successful, uh, we're having successful years because we stock rooftop units, and because on units, 12 and a half tons and below, we fit on the old curb, which we'll discuss, and, uh, and then units 15 plus, tons plus, we fit on the old train Voyager curbs, okay? So in my opinion, we have the best product offering ever, and Carrier and Bryant, we have the largest installed base in Chicago, and our new product, it not only fits on the curb, it has the same gas connection, the same electrical connection, which I'll discuss here in a second. So with that, Here's our product lineup. We're going to go into a three-tier market like we have in the past. And what, if you're familiar to our old product line, we used to have the TJHJ, what we called our 48PG. Okay. Now what we're doing is we're going to, we have our TC is our standard unit line, the 48TC, the Weathermaker line. Then we have the Weathermaster, which are 48HC line. And then we have the Weathermaster Plus line, which is what we call our 48LC. So the 48LC right now goes from three to five tons. And, the, 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 and I'll just discuss that in a bit. The HC is our performance tier product line, 15 CR Plus, three through 25 tons. And then we have the Weathermaker which is three through 27 and a half tons. So we're going to go to the three-tier approach moving towards the future here and knowing that in the future LC will go up to 25 tons later in this year. So this slide, if anybody does a takeaway this summer when we're doing rooftop replacements, you want to look at this slide and memorize it because any unit dating back from 1989 to now, the 48 HJ, LJ, TJ, TM, the, those equivalent units, so a 48 TC, 3 through 6 ton, will fit on the equivalent 3 through 6 ton of those units dating back to 1989. It not only fits on the same curb, it has the same electrical, same gas connection as the old carrier model. It is the easiest rooftop change out there is in the business. Okay, Same 7.5 to 12.5 tons, same exact thing. Fits on the same exact curb on the TC models. Note, when we talk about the high efficiency models, HC, because we're trying to cram extra efficiency in it, it only goes up to five tons will fit up to that six ton curb. And on the medium chassis, the six to 10 tons will fit on it, okay? Now above that, because we basically had our product line, we couldn't get any more efficiency out of our old box from 15, 25 tons, the old TJTM product up to 25 tons. We came up with the new TC and HC, which is 15 to 25 tons, and what this unit is designed to fit on is because it's a replacement market, it's designed to fit on the old train Voyager curb. So it'll fit on the old train Voyager curbs. Just contact your sales TEC sales representative, and they will confirm that if it fits in, the, it fits in there. We're going to talk now a little bit about the LC. Um, it's Carrier's most efficient rooftop ever. It's a 17.5 SEER equipment. Again, it's the same footprint, three to five tons, as the TC and HC. So it'll fit on the same curb. So now when we look at a replacement job and we have, let's say, an old DJ006 model, and we have, we can replace it with a TC06, 
we can replace it with an HCO6, and now we can replace it with an LCO6 for a high efficiency offering to it. And what the what the LC is is the LC is what we called before is the staged air volume unit. It has a two stage compressor and is going to have a VFD on the supply fan. It is going to modulate the airflow down to two thirds of the nominal CFM. So again, multi stage compressor. They say direct or belt drive with VFD. We're going to always stock or sell the belt drive with VFD. The direct drive does not give, in my opinion, enough static. It's going to have the integrated economizer, like we mentioned before, that will modulate the outside based on outside air. So the supply fan and the economizer will both track together. Okay. Standard features, foil face insulation, cooling operation up to 125 degrees, uh, non-corrosive drain pan like we have in all our units. And again, this is a staged air volume unit. I'm going to brief. I'm going to go over this fairly quick, and this is basically the uh, offering, the options. We can get this as an electromechanical unit, or we can get this as a comfort link unit. The comfort link, if for those who are familiar with it, has our scrolling marquee, like it does on the larger tonnage units. Has an integrated gas controller, induced draft combustion fan system. Has a larger access panel that's designed, which I'll go over in a bit. Uh, high efficiency round two plate fins, and again, belt drive, uh, belt drive motor with variable frequency drive. Um, every unit will have a TXV that's uh, sized properly, okay, and it'll also have an ECM outdoor fan motor controlling the condenser fan. You can do both supply, vertical supply, and horizontal supply. Um, and again, like I mentioned before, it's going to have a two-stage scroll, so we could use do it for single zone air volume uh, on the package unit. High low pressure switch is standard. Standard on all our options is we're going to have scroll compressors up to 25 tons. So with that, you're going to get a five-year compressor warranty. Uh, low pressure and high pressure switches standard. Um, that is a that is obviously a feature that is uh, very worthwhile from a from a warranty and uh, trouble. Uh, issues uh, in the field standpoint. We have something that we'll discuss here in a second, no strip screw technology. If you're familiar with those rooftops where you basically kept on drilling in and out of the holes, and now all of a sudden later on the screws get loose and they fall on the roof. We've actually come up with a system that helps that. Non-corrosive drain pan, easy access handle panels, ha handled panels, uh, large centralized control box, so an easier place for you to access all the control components. Um, and a 75 VA transform with circuit breaker. One of the options that we did on this also is we also have 15 t two 15 ton models. So we have this new 1.6 model, which is an extended chassis from our 3 through 25 ton, and it's called our 1.6 model. It'll give you 15 tons, but from a cost point, it's going to be a very competitive market uh, unit in the marketplace. Okay, it's going to be lighter than the traditional uh, competitors. And we're also, along with this, we're going to sell what we call our 1.7 model. The 1.7 model is still going to be in our lineup. It'll still be stocked. Okay? And the reason why we sell that 1.7 model uh, is because it fits, like I mentioned before, from a replacement market on the old train Voyager curb, which is nice. So that 1.7 model, we can sell it as a new model because some people like that, or we can sell the 1.6, which is going to be a little more cost competitive in the marketplace. Another option that we came up with was our new 30 model. Okay, if you look at a traditional 30 ton nominal unit tonnage from all the competitors, even Carrier, on our 30 ton 4850A series product, our 30 ton unit produces about 28 tons. Well, this 30 ton unit will produce 28 tons also. Train also, everybody the same way. Okay, so now we can produce 30 tons out of our standard unit line, and with that, we are going to be about a th little over a thousand pounds lighter than Train. We're going to be 22 pounds lighter than York, and we're going to be about 380 pounds lighter than Lennox on our on our 30 ton model. Like I mentioned before, here's a picture of the no strip screw collar. Again, you have positive panel retention, multiple use without stripping, self centering, and then you don't have the screws they, where they vibrate out of uh, out. And we also have easy access panels, so now you can put your fingers and get access to the package, to the unit itself, and the panels in the unit without cutting your fingers. That was a that was a big part. When we designed this new unit, 
um, what we did is we had contractors come through all out the country to go to Syracuse that were part of the design team. And they went through our old chassis line and they said, this is what was good about it, this is what was bad about it. And we fixed what we believe is to be the majority part of what was what they did not like about it. And one of them was I would cut myself on the unit panels when I would service it, and the other thing was screws would cut loose. So this is where they came up with some of these options. And the other one was the control panel wasn't big enough, so they made the control panel bigger. 15 to 25 tons. Okay, extended bearing lines uh, is what we have on it. Again, now what we can do is we can do vertical or horizontal duct out of the unit itself, slide out filter tracks, uh, belt protection system. I mentioned before it fits on the old train Voyager curbs. Previously, our older versions, 15 to 25 tons, you had to purchase the five-year compressor warranty. Now it comes standard up to 25 tons. You no longer have to purchase it. Make sure if you're competing with someone who's in the marketplace, who's competing with someone else, that you, they know that you have a five-year compressor warranty, and we have it standard. If you look at the bottom of this picture here, you will see on the 48 TM, 15 to 25 tons, we had the old over and under side discharge curb configuration. So you paid for, not only we, we had you pay for the curb, uh, but then it was a very tough install, okay, from a horizontal discharge standpoint. Um, with our new TCHC, 15 to 27 and a half tons, we can do side to side, side by side configuration out of the rooftop unit itself. And this market is a lot bigger than we anticipated it. And uh, just as a heads up, we do offer this as an option now. Out of the standard unit, you do not need a curb. If you want to retrofit to the old units that had the curb, we could provide a horizontal curb if you need it. Um, some of the factory installed options, and these are just real quick. Uh, everyone has economizer options, CO2. Uh, what well, we have our rooftop open con protocol controller to do integrate into an automation system, convenience outlets, stainless steel heat exchangers, smoke detectors, louvered panels, disconnects, power exhaust, humidimizer. That's what I want to focus some time and energy on here next. So let's go through that here in a bit. Um, but this kind of shows you our product warranty standpoint. Again, compressor, five years, uh, heat exchanger, 10 years, stainless steel, 15 years, electric heat, five years. If you want with a Novation all aluminum coil, it's three years, and all other parts are one year. I want to talk about humidimizer, so um, pay attention because this is going to be one of the questions so that I'm going to discuss here. So we have carrier is unique to the marketplace when we talk about refrigerant reheat. Okay. What we do is we have three modes of operation. The first mode is called normal mode, right? It's a design day out. I have a standard call for cooling. So if you picture on a wall, I have a thermostat and I have a humidity sensor on the wall, okay? On this normal mode, the thermostat is calling for cooling. The humidity sensor is satisfied because it's design day and I'm properly dehumidifying anyways because the compressors are running and properly dehumidifying the space. So it's in normal mode. I, can, I don't have a call for humidity, I'm running cooling only, and the humidity sensor is not activated. Okay. Then I have, which is what carrier exclusive, is what we have our sub-cooling mode. Now, our, our sub-cooling coil and our hot gas reheat coil is bigger than everybody else's. And it's not only on one circuit, it's on both circuits. So if you have a 7.5 ton unit with two circuits, you have it on the first circuit and you have it on the second circuit. And it's the full face of it. So now, what I have here is I have a situation on those part load days, the spring and the fall times where I have a call for cooling and it's turning on and off. Now, I basically have a, my, temp, my thermostat is calling and I have a humidity sensor that's calling and saying, I need to provide some de more dehumidification in the space. What this does is this allows us to provide extra latent capacity by up to 40%. Okay? Now, up to 40% extra latent capacity. Now, the, everybody else in the industry cannot do that because they don't have a full face coil. They often have just a partial face coil. And they usually don't do it on both circuits. They only do it on one circuit. That's why it's so unique to what Carrier does. And then we have our third mode of operation, which is our hot gas reheat mode. And that is what happens is now my thermostat is satisfied, but now my humidity in the space is not satisfied. And now what I'll do is I'll provide 72 to 75 degree neutral air to the space, so I will not provide any overcooling, and I'm going to basically reheat the air. 
So with the humidimizer, we're going to combine, again, this is what we used to call it moisturizer. Now what we have is we have a condenser bypass and we have this additional coil, which now what we call humidimizer. So I'm going to kind of go through the operation of the humidimizer uh, in the following diagram here. So I'm going to go over this in the next slide. So here is our normal mode. If you follow the yellow line, the refrigerant is flowing in this direction and I have a solenoid valve that's closed here on the hot gas solenoid right here and then my liquid line solenoid valve is open. So I'm basically pushing refrigerant through the normal condenser and the normal evaporator in a normal mode. Again, thermostat is calling, my humidity sensor is not calling. Okay, that's the first mode. Second mode, subcooling mode, and I apologize about why my slide is a little uh, funked up here. So this is where I'm providing an extra 40% extra latent capacity. Okay, in this case, my hot gas solenoid valve is closed. My liquid line solenoid valve is closed, forcing the refrigerant to run through the subcooling coil. So now what I'm doing is I'm subcooling the refrigerant and then reheating it back up, and I'm providing an extra 40% extra latent capacity on that rooftop unit at that moment. Okay. Hot gas reheat mode, this is where the hot gas solenoid valve is open, the liquid line solenoid valve is closed, I could provide up to 100% up to latent capacity on this package rooftop unit. Okay? Now the key thing with carrier is that we can do this with two circuits. Okay? So on a, uh, on a, on a uh, five ton unit, I have three modes of operation. If you have a situation, let's say where we had an old 10 ton rooftop unit that needed to be replaced, an old 48 DJE012, and it was, we were having humidity problems because someone oversized the rooftop unit. Okay. If you put humidimizer on there, I would, I would bet a lot of money that that would solve the problem. Okay. So it's a nice feature because now you could add it on a package rooftop in it, it fits on the same curb, and you can solve the humidity problem in the space. I'm surprised that this is not used more in the marketplace. Okay. Um, but it's a fantastic offering that Carrier has. It's called humidimizer, and on Bryant, it's called perfect humidity. Again, summarize that, we have normal mode, normal package rooftop operation, part load capability with the subcooling mode, which is mode two, and then we have the hot gas reheat mode on neutral air. Again, we have three, three modes per circuit, okay, is what we have. And we have a great application piece on Humidimizer. If you're interested in it, you could email me and send me an email saying, hey, I want, the, I want that application piece, and I'll send you over the application piece on Humidimizer if you, want to take an, you know, if you want to take that for your reference. I don't know how this slide got in here, but I guess it's the train unit that's equivalent to what we sell on our Humidimizer. If you look closely at that, we have our standard, they have their standard cooling coil, and next to their supply fan, you could clearly see it's not the full face area of their standard cooling coil. They have the sub, the uh, hot gas reheat coil. Okay, and what it is, it's strictly a hot gas reheat coil. So it's similar to our mode three, where it's tr trying to provide neutral air, but in this case, it is providing warmer than neutral air. Okay, so we got neutral air, and if you look closely at that fan, you can see a belt. Okay, what happens if that belt breaks? Well, that belt breaks, it damages the coil, right? And it damages the coil, there's a lot of repair work to done, be done. Again, I'm going to mention our carrier unit, the belt is not in that place, but this is what we compete against in the marketplace when we talk about hot gas reheat. That's why the carrier humidimizer option is, in my opinion, the much better offering than all our competitors offer. Now let's talk a little bit about energy recovery ventilation. Um, the codes are now going to, uh, based on the codes that are going to be adopted soon, uh, you are going to have to require more outside air uh, on, on package rooftop units. Um, so with that, we have what we call our Energy X, which is on our 48HC product line. Okay, The Energy X itself, basically whatever outside air we bring in, it goes through the wheel and then we're basically tempering that air with the wheel itself. This has been a very successful product that we've sold in the marketplace. 
and with this, we are able to recover some of the energy that we're exhausting out of the building. And we recover approximately 70% of that energy that we exhaust out of the building. So now we could take a standard package rooftop unit and we could do you know, 50 to 75% of the outside here, bring in 50 to 75% of the outside here and feel very comfortable about doing that with the wheel. Um, again, this is on our 48HC model, 3 through 25 tons. We get combined, combined certified efficiency standards up to 18, which is combined efficiency factor. Again, it's an enthalpy wheel that we're using with this and comes with ComfortLink standard. Everything is factory installed, factory tested right out of the factory. Use a standard curb, so we don't have two curbs. We have a standard curb. It's a single point power connection. It's ETL. Um, the exhaust in the supply fans are basically variable speed. They're ECM motors, so we can now vary the amount of outside air that we could bring in through the wheel. So we could do demand control ventilation, which is a key offering, which we offer standard on this unit. If you look at most other offerings out there, it's a, if they turn it on, they turn it off. So once you balance it to what you ever want to bring in the air, that's the air you're going to bring in until you have to hire a balancer and rebalance it. Now with ours, in the control package, you could easily change the amount of outside air you bring in and exhaust out the building. Okay? And there's outside air measuring with the unit itself. <clears throat> Some rules of thumb on ERVs. In cooling mode operation, the reason why we do this is because for every thousand CFM we bring into the building, we recover 2.4 tons of cooling. Okay? In the heating mode, for every thousand CFM we bring in uh, to the building, we are going to recover approximately 80,000 BTUs. Okay, heating season is where we provide the payback in the Chicago, Milwaukee, Rockford area, which is going to be about a two to three year payback in, in cases where we have, say, over 40 percent outside air. Controls. Um, what we have here for controls is we can either do two things. We can control it with an electromechanical controller, which is standard thermostat, which is what the majority of the marketplace does. And then we can offer it with their DDC controls, which is our Premier Link Comfort Link rooftop unit, rooftop open option on our package rooftop units. Now the key takeaway here is if you look at it, these are our offerings on controls. Um, I'm not going to go specifically in controls. What I'm going to say is if you have a problem and you have a job that it needs to have a DDC control system, what I need you to do is you need to contact your TEC sales representative and schedule a meeting with our controls group. Our controls group at TEC is growing and we provide a lot of parts and smarts capabilities to the contractors where we'll provide drawings, we'll do the commissioning, uh, of the uh, of the controls for you, so we'll send you some wiring diagrams to install the controls, and then you can install those controls in the field yourself, and then we will commission the job in, in the end. Talk to your TEC sales representative to schedule a meeting with the controls group. Now let's go to support tools. Now this is where the interesting stuff comes in here. So we're going to talk a little bit about training, communications, program, software, selection tools, and financing. A real thing was what we're going to talk about is the Rooftop Invest. We came up with this software. It's called Rooftop Unit Invest. It's fast and it's very easy to use. Okay, it'll produce a very high quality report, and it's powered by the industry recognized HAP program. It's an 8760 hour by hour analysis. It will strengthen your credibility when you're talking to owners about payback, and it reduces any chance for error. And best of all, it is free from TEC. And all you have to do is ask your sales representative or, TE or TM to ask them to install it on your computer. Okay? Uh, it will require a face-to-face -face meeting to do this, so, uh, but we can do that. Okay? Let's go through a little example problem. So I have a 10-ton replacement rooftop in an office building. We're replacing an old 48 DJE 012-5 rooftop unit and the economizer is not working properly and we probably have like a failed heat exchange or a bad compressor on the unit which is why they're looking at changing it out. So what I want to do is I want to look at replacing the 48TC012 and find out what the payback is with when I replace the 48DJE012 rooftop unit. My next option I want to look at upgrading that 48TC012 and I want to offer two stage fans and look at the payback. Okay, associated with offering the, the staged air volume unit of the TCE-012. 
And then I want to look and see how much do I save by going from a TC to an 8C per year. So we're going to go through the software. The other part I wanted to mention about staged air volume, which you're saving a lot of energy, but the other thing you do with it is we're actually helping dehumidify the air better also. So now we're slowing down the air and we're dehumidifying the air better uh, when we're doing that. So let's go to the software. Okay, so in this case, <coughs> what we're doing is we're going to put the U.S., we're going to put our location, you could put your building type of what you have, hotel, manufacturing, office, restaurant, school, warehouse, and we're going to look at operating schedules based on that, based on the HAP inputs, the unit peak cooling tons, and then we could put our energy prices and we can use the EIA energy data, and I just have the Illinois EIA energy default data tied into this right now. You could manually put in whatever data you want to put in if you want to. So again, I look at my old unit, I have a on the first line, on the baseline, I have a 48 DJ from 1988 to 1993 E012, R22, it's 20 years old, it's a 10 ton unit, it was, when it originally was purchased, it was an 8.6 year, two stage cooling operation, 174 MBH, 80% heat exchangers, probably a lot less now, uh, alternate motor, and the indoor fan motor is a single speed, and I mentioned before, I don't click economizer because the economizer is not working properly and probably not, was, not, was not working properly for a while. I have my unit, which is the 48TC012, R410A, 10 sear, 11.1, two-stage control on two-stage compressor, 184, 82, and again, I'm going medium speed, and I have single speed because I'm not doing the two-stage option yet, and I'm saying my economizer works. Now, this is real speed. I want to show you guys how fast this works. I could do a, I'm just going to do a comparison report, and I'm going to unclick some of this because I just want to do a comparison report real quick and show you how quick it works. So with that, it just popped up, all right? And it shows here that the end user that I'm going to save about $567 per year by replacing that package rooftop unit. Okay, so I'm going to save about 17% energy from what he was previously paying. Now, if I'm replacing a 20-ton unit, it doesn't make sense to invest a lot of money when I'm doing that change out. Okay, so if I look at that, it does not make a lot of sense. So let's now, now with looking at that, let's look at our second option, which is I want to look at, actually here, what I want to look at here now is I'm going to plug some numbers in it. Let's say on the bottom here, I'm going to put a purchase price of, let's say, around $11,000. Actually, I'm going to say one speed, and I'm going to put $9,500 is what the purchase price was. So I have $9,500 for a purchase price and install price on a 10-ton unit, just kind of using some very uh, vague, very, very um, um, I guess, uh, numbers that I think people can deal with in the marketplace. The perch in the uh, on the old unit. Let's say I have to do two thousand dollars worth of repairs, and let's say every year it's going to cost me a thousand dollars if I fix this thing. So that's what I'm going to assume. So let's do calculation and do a report on that. And you're going to see here it's doing the HAP energy analysis. It's generating the uh, numbers. It's doing the HAP. 8760 analysis on this building right now and with that you can see that we show that they really the payback is in about 4.6 years to replace that package rooftop unit so we could show the end user that if he invests those dollars now in about 4.6 years he will pay back the replacement of that package rooftop unit and over five years he's going to save about eight thousand one hundred and fourteen dollars total savings over five years and then he gets this nice report it shows you some details of what we replaced in the unit and uh, it gives you the comparison of the old unit in the new unit and gives you all the specifics of how we analyze the data okay so that's part of what we provide in that software package now let's look at providing two-stage fan and I'm gonna say that the two-stage fan option is gonna cost about fifteen hundred dollars more so let's look at two-stage fan option, which means the VFD staged air volume. Same unit, all I'm going to do is staged air volume now. 
let's do the analysis based on this. Okay, now what I'm showing is there's a payback in 3.6 years and I'm saving about $14.71 per year in energy cost by doing this with the variable speed drive. Now, again, I put more dollars in the front end cost and now I'm showing that my payback is 3.6 years, which is less than 4.5, um, which is a very substantial energy savings piece here. So nice, nice again, you get a nice cumulative saving chart here and you get a very nice report out of the software. And as you can see, it's using the HAP analysis software. So it's uh, providing the following assumptions on the bottom. And you can see here where it has the building envelope and what it's assuming is part of the uh, analysis when we're making the analysis. Now I want to show you, let's look at let's look at running a high efficiency unit versus a standard efficiency unit. Now you notice a lot of times when I talk about high efficiency units, we talk about incentives that the that, that Comet is, is is offering to the to the customer. And in this case, Comet does not offer any programs to go into a high efficiency units. And I'm going to show you why in a second. So we have our 48 TC standard efficiency unit as our baseline versus our 48 HC unit. And what you're finding here on that is you have a payback of approximately $18 per year. <laughs> so you can see why um, ComEd does not want to offer a uh, incentive package to going to high efficiency because based on my HAP analysis, I am saving approximately around $18 a year by going to a standard efficiency unit versus a high efficiency unit. Now what I would recommend doing is saying, if you want to go high efficiency, let's take that unit and go to two stage. So now let's look at going from a high standard efficiency to a high efficiency. Now, that high efficiency unit, I could use a standard efficiency and go to two stage, but let's look at this comparison real quick. And this is going to take just a second, so it's going to redo this again. In this case, I'm saving $951 a year. So if we said earlier that that VAV option is approximately, let's say, $1,500, somewhere around there is an adder, my payback is less than two years of a payback on a 10-ton rooftop unit. So not only do I have su substantial payback on putting a VFD on it, I'm getting dollars from ComEd for putting a VFD on a rooftop unit, and I provide better dehumidification control with a package standard 10 ton rooftop unit also. So this software is so powerful and, and I am, I'm just extremely happy with what Carrie came up with this. It's really cool, cool stuff here what we're talking about. So if anybody has any questions on that, you can let me know. Uh, let's continue on with the presentation. Um, what I'm going to do here, April 4th in Melrose Park, under tecmongo.com backslash training, we're going to do something called commercial replacement experts. And this is where myself and Ryan Hoger do a class in Melrose Park. And uh, we're going to go through a commercial sales process. We're going to do uh, uh, basically repair versus replace strategy. We're going to look at a building, uh, building, uh, building um, itself and run a little quick load using our block load software and we're going to look at a professional proposals on here. So we're going to do this. Now what I'm going to do, typically there is a class. Actually Carrier, when they come to town, and actually I think Ryan and I can do a better, just as good of a job or better than Carrier does, that's why we are actually doing it ourselves in house. Not saying that the Carrier guys aren't good, but we like to put our own Chicago touch on it. Um, and what we're doing is that, mar that class usually talks about co costs about $250 per person. What we're doing in Chicago is we're all we're doing is we're going to pay for the literature. So we're going to charge you $50 for the class to go through this for the day. And, and what I'm going to do is if you can answer the first person to answer the two questions right, I'm going to basically give you the class for free um, if you want to, if you're interested in it. So all you got to do is answer the question at the end and the first 
first person to answer the question correct, correctly, they will get the class at no charge, and all they got to do is send a note over to me, and I will approve the no charge for the class. Next thing I want to talk about is what we call our rooftop selection guide, which is our app. Um, Carrier came up with what we call our quick rooftop selection guide piece, and actually Dave Yano in our office invest, in, invented this piece where if you look, it's like a two-page two piece, and on the one page, we have the tonnage with electrical characteristics, and all you do is slide it, and you get the proper amps and size fit. And on the next page, on the back of it, it's where you select your curb adapter. So actually, here, it's on the back page here, you would select the curb adapter. And what this does is if you give this in the hands of your service techs in the field, they can do on-site, they can verify the curb adapter dimensions the first site visit. Okay, so if you have a call and they say, hey, I have a replacement rooftop that needs to be replaced, I want you to give me some prices, you, your tech can go out in the field and look at this and he'll go down and, and go down to the existing model number and on the bottom here it'll tell you the, the size of the existing curb and you could verify that without having to go back out to the job site to do a second check. Okay, which is key. Because if I have to send a tech out there again to, do, to look at our unit, that's dollars that I'm spending out of the company's uh, pocket. Okay, it costs money to send someone out again. Now it doesn't cost that. And what we've done to better this piece is now it's an app. It's an app that's available on um, Apple products, and it's also an app available on Android products. Uh, I have it both on my iPad and I have it on my Droid phone. It works very well. So now you can go in there, you can pick the old units, you look at the, what the curb adapter looks like, and it'll spit out the dimensions of it. And now your text in the field can be very productive by finding the exact curb adapter dimensions of what we used to have. So that's a really nice option we have to offer now also. Uh, carrier Finance Program, we partner with Irvin Leasing. I'm just going to fly through this quickly. If you have customers that are interested in leasing, Really what you need to do, and I'm just going to, you go to commercial, carriercommercialfinance.com, carriercommercialfinance.com, and with that, you will get to Irvin Leeson's website, you will download the, uh, the basically registration form, and you could, it's very easy to use, it's a simple spreadsheet, they will finance the full cost, not just the rooftop unit, the full installation, so they will finance it, they'll give you your payback period of how long it takes to pay back, very, very simple tool if you have a customer that's interested in financing. So what's the takeaway? Well, today's market is driven by replacement and energy upgrades. Okay, uh, We have the Carrier and Brodick product is the absolute best product we have had, in, in my opinion, ever since I've been with TEC. Um, we fit on our old curbs. That's the takeaway. We can solve humidity problems with a couple of issues, right? We could use two-stage fans which solves humidity issues because I'm reducing airflow and dehumidifying better. Or I can use humidimizer, okay? Um, we have the CRE that's coming, the Commercial Replacement Experts that's coming April 4th if you want to sign up for that. And a lot of this stuff is available on HVAC Partners if you're interested in that. So with that, here's our questions for today. Okay, question one. On a carrier 10-ton rooftop unit, two circuits, how many modes of operation does the rooftop offer for humidity control? Okay. Question two, besides the VFD that is added to the rooftop unit for staged air volume, what other option on the rooftop has to be modified? Okay, so humidimizer and staged air volume. On a 10-ton unit, how many modes of operation do I get on a two circuit unit and on a VFD what else has to be changed on the rooftop unit and if anybody else has any other questions they could they could email me questions
Okay. Okay, here we go. So let's just... Okay. I don't have a quick answer today. Okay, and I guess the quick, the the real quick thing that we have to look at, and that is the humidimizer offers three modes of operation per circuit. Right. So that's why the that's why it kind of got a little tricky. So with that, let me know uh, what you think. Okay. All right, so I got my first question. All right, so so I will contact the uh, the person who has come up with the correct answer. Uh, it looks like it's going to. Uh, so I got I got a couple quick correct answers here. So um, I think we're all set. So uh, actually, hold up. I actually had a I had a correct answer before that, and I apologize. So. Uh, Yeah, I had a correct answer. Okay, so anyways, anybody else have any questions or or um, anything else regarding the presentation today? Please uh, submit your uh, submit any questions. If anybody wants to contact me directly, again, my email address uh, is uh, Mike M I K E dot Smid S M I D is in David at T E C Mungo dot com, and my cell phone is eight four seven six three zero. Seven eight six seven eight four seven six three zero seven eight six seven. Okay, so I think that's it.